Hello. Hey, Lisa. Hello, uh, Jacqueline. Well, everybody take a moment to get their screens ready. Some of you might want to start up, I think, the Apple. Make sure it's the right one for you guys. So in your physics classroom, uh, I think the Apple is the one that's going to give you guys access to. Go away. Yeah, there we go. And um, it should look like this. I think I'm presenting. Yeah, I'm presenting. So we're going to go to this one. Um, but we're gonna do some other steps involved with that one. All right, so I, I think we did net force last time. We're gonna be taking snapshots around motion. Um, not motion, I'm sorry, friction, because that's the only one where you're, you'll start to understand Newton's third law. So make sure you have this queued up and ready to use later on. So again, you get there by using the slideshow and click on the Apple. If you can't find it that way, let me know. I'll probably put it in, let me just put it in the chat right now so you guys can have it. Okay, hold on, let me see, somebody's typing. If I get kicked, let me go to the chat, what'd she say? If I get kicked, it's my Wi-Fi issues, this is the first class I could join. Oh, okay. All right, I understand, Lisa. Okay, so this is the link for the simulator, in case you guys need to load that first. Especially with internet issues, you might want to load that first and uh, play around with it, or at least get it started. How much time I got left before everybody else considered late, late? A uh, minute. So we're gonna do our, our norms in a minute, and then we're gonna go through this problem together. You should also be logged into ESB and have your screen sized and ready to go. So one side you should have established your Google Doc. On the side you should have ESB and this is today's assignment. All right, so uh, who can tell me what today's title is? Let's just see who's paying attention. This is five people. Okay. We got some latecomers, I bet. So does anyone know? Okay, <laughs> was you just waiting for a second, Lisa? <laughs> yes, Tippy Canoe. So we also know. Oh uh, goodness gracious! Wife. Yeah, that's gotta hurt. So yeah, put the title in there. Let me stop this clock. And now we're going to go over our norms. So uh, one second. Um, so the title is to be a new, right? And uh, expand this a little bit, put that in the center. And then um, our norms, let's go through those real quick. So we set the stage of what's going on. Uh, let's see here. Lisa, can you read the first five? No one has the right to hurt another person. Education the place and one sacred. We would never be here in a way that would discredit ourselves, our school, or our family. And Excel Academy at Southwest Street is always a lady or gentleman. We take pride in Excel Academy at Southwest. Thank you, Lisa. Wow, she did that quickly. <laughs> um, so, Miss Camacho, can you read the five academic norms? I'm 
Oh, your microphone is out? I forgot about that. All right. Um, we respect the opinions of others. We respect the culture of the classroom. We are attentive and participate. We have high expectations of ourselves, our peers, and our teachers. We are here to focus on preparing ourselves for post-secondary endeavors. All right. So with that said, um, here's the question. I want to see if Jacqueline can answer this. Lisa, you probably already know. What are three routes for post-secondary endeavors? Three routes that you can take advantage of after high school. What are they? And Jacqueline, you can type that in. What do you think they are? All right, I'm gonna come back to her and see. Um, let's share. And as we have this initial assignment, right? And I think Lisa already helped us out starting it off. So let's get through the problem so we can have a good day. I knew that was gonna happen. Look at that. Another student. That's one of them, Jacqueline. Yeah, college. There's two more. Just so five points. You got one of them. Uh, Courtney, welcome to class. Let me go back and do attendance again. Courtney's here. Uh, I had Lisa. Okay, somebody just chatted something. Trade school? Oh, that's the next one. You got five more. Okay, so do you remember the last one? There you go. Okay. <laughs> it took you a second, huh? It's the only one I can remember. But you remember that. So everybody should be establishing their document, right? Like I have on the screen. I think you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just trying to check the. T yeah, it says I'm still showing you. If you can't see it, let me know. I think it's there. Uh, let's see. Jacqueline is here. She's been here. Uh... Okay, Courtney's here, and Angel was here. I don't know what happened to him. He disappeared. Is Angel in here? Nope. All right, so he left. Someone else is coming in here. I'm giving you guys time to just get your documents set up. Uh, it's what's on the screen there. Uh, there's Aaliyah. I was like, she's usually here. Welcome to class, Aaliyah. All right. Uh, let's make sure everybody's logged in the system that just came in. Okay, so Wallace, I don't see him. Uh, Angelique's not here yet. Who else is missing from here? I gotta check on this new uh, student, uh, Kylie Childs, and Christopher Clark hasn't come back. All right, so well, that's the roll call. I'm gonna send this to the office. I supposed to go to the office. This is where Esby is being slow. Come on. There we go. Okay. Whew. All right. So back to you guys. I'm sorry. I was having technical difficulties with Esby. Now, um, what I was saying was, you want to make sure you set up your document just like this, like I have on the screen. All right. So with that said, now there's the exit slip part. So here's the exit slip portion. I tried to put that in there during in between uh, periods. We have so much going on. So there we go. And somebody just said something. Is oh okay yes okay. I was gonna ask you, Lisa, did I spell it right? And I don't think I did. Is Empath. <laughs> I think I think you got it though. I, I forgot the other H though. Okay, so I got to fix that. Thank you, Lisa. I was like, did I get that word right, Lisa? I was gonna ask you that. So, in fat, empathetic. Is that how to spell it? Let me put that there. I think that's what it is. What she's saying. Okay, and um, I'm gonna check it in a moment uh, for the definition and make sure we spelled it right, but. The new, I do know the classroom term today. I am a physicist. So the word here is uh, Newton's third law, if you can see that there. Okay, so you're going to, you know, if you have the Google slide deck, you can see this for yourself, right? Because I change it and it should update accordingly. Now, um, let me grab this link and put it in the chat. 
So you guys can at least take advantage of that. Okay. And uh, I want to say, hey, grab this link. And I think I, I give you guys a link every day in your recording section. So it's like, all right. Usually the recordings are available by 4 p.m. I keep saying it to you guys. I don't think you know. So, yeah, this is the one. Someone just put something in the chat. Word of the day is empathetic. All right. I think Lisa fact check, fact check me. Let me see here. What is she saying? Word of the day is empathetic. Empathic. Very expressive. I spelled it right, Lisa. Okay. You threw me off. All right. I'm going to go back and change it. But um, this is the slide deck. Lisa helped us out with the first part of it. Okay. So um, in the slide deck, you click on me. It goes through everything that happens in the class. All right. Um, here, if you click on me, you will go to any previous course uh, classes. Uh, you guys are the physics students, right, for uh, period two. So you click on this yellow bar, and you can click on me again. Uh, you come to the physics classroom. That's what I was trying to show you all, and you have simulations. So I want to make sure you have that. That's the Google slide deck. You all need to click on this apple here and get to uh, friction, all right? So... You click on this apple because we're going to be talking about some forces in third motion. You'll have this simulator going, but it's called friction, the selection you want to make when you get to the home screen. So you're going to see the home screen, click friction, and then you'll have this going. All right. So take a moment and get that set up because you're going to need that on a tab because we're going to take a screenshot today. And that's what's going to go in our Google Doc here. So we got a little more to put in here, right? So I said that I said a lot. What does that mean? Exit slip, right? Uh, is worth and usually worth twenty five points. Plural points. Uh, the classroom term of the day. And this is what Lisa was alluding to. She's helping everybody out. Um, is and it was uh, Newton's that's inside the brackets by the way everybody uh, third law I made sure that was very obvious for everyone next is the word of the day okay and say what was it Lisa I think got it right empathetic about to have Google uh, pretty much uh, pronunciate that for me. All right, so that is our exit slip at the moment, right? Now, what do we put in there next? Let's grab it from Edsby, okay? So if we're in Edsby, you come to the assignment for today. This is yesterday's recordings. You're gonna come here to today's assignment and you have the synchronous problem 1S and an asynchronous problem 2A, okay? So with that said, you're gonna, you know, have a student read this portion so we can understand. There's a homework portion. Oh, there's a GGI link, everybody. I just saw that. Thank you, Excel Academy of Southwest, whoever that is. So they just gave you the link for GGI in case you guys needed it. Um, so in the chat, uh, I need to have. Let's see, can I get Aaliyah to read what's in the chat? That was Mr. Borders, Lisa. Okay. Aaliyah, are you there? All right. Uh, let's see. Courtney, can you read what's in the chat, please? You're muted, sir. I see you on the camera, but. Oh. oh, there you go. Let's see. Hello and good day, all future physicists. Please remember that synchronous problems need to be completed and ready to present tomorrow in class. Asynchronous problems to have to be completed as homework and will be checked tomorrow in class as well. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Um, let's see here. We have another portion. I'm going to see. I, I don't think Ali is there. But I'm going to see if Lisa can read this part because it's how you get maximum credit, right? So can you read that portion in the chat, Lisa? Please remember to get maximum credit 
all calculations steps for the final answers to the problems need to be uploaded to SB Visa, the same format that we have been using since the start of the quarter. This format is shown in the video. Type Google Doc, convert it to a PDF. Stay safe out there, Zen. Thank you, Lisa. All right, so now if we're looking into how to do the problem, uh, it's right here. It's the first problem. We're going to copy both problems now over to the uh, the Google Doc we have. So that's the first problem. Now we need the second problem, right? So this is the asynchronous problem. Come over here and that, right? So we have both of our problems. And if you notice, they're identical. So there's like nothing to run away from with the homework problem. You guys can do this. Welcome back, Angel. Oh, man, I marked you absent because you didn't come back. Everything all right? Don't come my computer oh, died. Well, you're back, man. Um, so you can catch up with the work. We got our documents started and we got our questions in there. Try to get that started. Uh, glad to have you back to class. I got a mark on present now. Computer issues. That's why I want to put it in the notes. Why didn't it update? Let me refresh. I think there's a lag with the Edsby site. Yes, okay. Now I wanted to put a note. Computer issues. Okay. Hopefully that's saved. Okay, so back to the question at hand, right? We want to first, I want to get out the way the simulation, right? So you understand what's going on. And then this is going to have you guys draw a simulator, um, a simulated representation of what is occurring in this problem. So you have one force. And let me see, am I, is my camera on? Yeah. So you got one force. Let's say that first force is uh, this apple, if everybody can see what I'm doing. All right. Let's see here. I go, yeah, I wanted to make sure I could see what I'm showing you guys, but the presentation is still going. So you have this apple in my hand. That's one force. You can call that uh, the canoe of one. Let's say the other force is my phone. It's another canoe. All right. I think everybody sees what I'm doing. So they are coming together and you can't see it? No. You got, because you click on me, you got to pin me and not the presentation. Okay. Do you see me now? See the little plastic apple I got in my hand and my phone? <laughs> yeah, I see it now. Okay. So basically what I'm saying is these two are, they represent, one represents the canoe one, and the other represents canoe two, okay? So they're going to push off of each other, and that's called Newton's third law. For every force, there's an equal and opposite reaction. All right, so now you need to pin back the, the presentation. I just wanted to start that off in your mind when you're reading the problem, okay? So, Lisa, can you uh, – well, now I'll read the problem because uh, I've, I've been leaning on you a lot. So uh, let me unpin myself so because I want to make sure you guys can see what I was doing. All right, there. So the presentation should be still showing. So basically with this problem, you have two groups of canoeists. They're in a canoe, like I said, and they're paddling. They meet in the middle of a lake. After a brief visit, a person in canoe one pushes on canoe two, right? So they sit there in the middle of this lake, two canoes on the water, and they push off each other. Now, when they push, pushing on canoe two with a force of 48 newtons, right, to separate the canoes. So this is there in the water, and it's like they push off each other, and that allows them to float away just from that little bit of force. Now, the mass of canoe one and its occupants is mass one equals 152 kilograms. And the mass of canoe two in, and its occupants is mass two, which is equal to 250 kilograms. What's the acceleration of each canoe? All right. Well, 
we know our equation is still going to be, if you don't remember, F equals MA, right? This is from last time. Force is, or force is equivalent to the mass multiplied by the acceleration. We got to use this again to figure out, you know, the forces, uh, what the mass is. We're going to do that in a moment. But now we need to figure out what the acceleration of each one was. So let's go through it slowly. Um, if we understand uh, what the dimensions are, we can move further with this uh, this statement. So it's Newtons, right? That's what it, forces are measured in. You guys are taking notes. Uh, mass is in kilograms. should be typing what I'm typing. And that's going to be multiplied by acceleration. That's going to be meters per second. And it's going to be squared. So I'm going to raise that to the power of 2. Awesome. All right. Close parentheses. So we'll come down one. And what do we do next? we got to make the mathematical representation of such. So that's F equals M. Uh, times A, and here's the issue, our M times A situation, M, lowercase M times A, that's usually how they write it. You have two versions of this. You have the one for part one of the problem set, and then you have one for part two, right? So part one is going to be the canoeist, right? First canoeist. Part two is going to be the second canoeist, right? So they're, they're, you're doing one for each canoe, basically. So what that means is you'll have this new equation here. Down one and put that there. And this is going to be the first one. Where is it at? Here we go. So it's going to be subscript. And let's turn it off. All right. And the next one is going to be pretty much the same, but it's going to be the, the second one, or the, for the second canoe. So that's going to be two. All right, so let's load this up a little bit so you can see it. Um, in a moment, we're going to do share outs, and what you need to have is about this much here that I have on the screen. Um, I think that's bigger for you guys to see even better. So um, we have what we need now. But what we got to do is we got to set up our known and unknown values, OK? So come back here and make sure that's off, because I think that was, yeah, it was subscripted. So I'm going to turn it off. There we go. And then I'm going to come over here. We need our known and unknown. What do we not know? What is the question asking us? OK? Oh, I want to take a moment. Does everybody have these notes initially? Now, do you want me to put it into the chat? Because there's things you have to subscript to get it done. Lisa put the second. I didn't see all this going on in the chat. Yeah, she put the second question in there. Thank you. So are you guys able to see and type it? Or are you going to put it in the chat? Because you're still going to have to go back and do these edits to the screen. I got mass typed. You got yours typed up, Lisa, already? Okay. Um, any, anybody yeah. else need it in the chat, or you could just see it and type it like Lisa did? Like, what's what's going on? You got to tell me if you're keeping up or not. Because I'm about to go into the next steps known and unknown values. All right. I'm going to assume that means everybody's keeping up. Remember, we have share outs. You have to show something for participation. You can't just have a blank screen. Oh, I was going to go and fix me a sandwich. Please don't do that. Try to get something done right now. Uh, so what are our known values? Let's take a look at this. Inside the problem, we notice that there is a force, right? So F is equal to something, right? That's how you should have picked this problem apart. So with, with that known, and I told you this is Newton's third law, that's our term of the day. Make sure you look that up, right? So you get the definition of it. Uh, basically, when they did that, two forces were created, not just one. 
So here is where you see that. So we have the force of the first canoeist, right? So we can call it F1. Make sure you subscript to one. All right, turn it off. And that's going to be equivalent to what? Well, we know that he's going to be pushed away in pretty much the negative X direction. So, you, like I said, with the apple, that's the represents the apple I showed you guys earlier. It'll be pushed away from the positive X direction. So if you're going positively that way, where the canoe came from, that's going to go negative. So that means they're going to go to the left. So let's type this up so you understand it. That's going to be negative. And what was the Newton amount? I think it was 48 Newtons. All right. And remember, this is going to the left. That's, that's the way the canoe is going to be floating now, away from when they met together. All right. So to the left. And then you still have to understand that you got to talk about what happens with the first, with the second canoeist. Where are they going to go? You know, common sense would tell you they're going to go to the right because they're coming from opposite angles or opposite directions of the lake. They're going to go to the right. So that's going to be 48 positive, right? Because if you think about your X, Y axis, uh, Cartesian grid, I know a lot of guys did, um, we did equation of line. X goes to the right, it's positive. X goes to the left, it's negative. This is what this is happening here, so don't get confused. But this is Newton's third law. If we push off a wall, there's a force that goes against us that holds us in place. If there's nothing there, you're going to fall straight on your face. Just common sense, right? So 48 Newton's positive, and this is going to be, again, not to the left, but to the right. That's the way that the, uh, to the left, to the left, no. To the, what happened there? And this is to the right. That's not playing with me. All right, so we got that taken care of. Now we gotta go back to the problem, see what else we were given. And if we look here, it looks like the mass one. I think I made this super easy for you guys. The mass one is equal to, I kind of just told you, didn't I? Um, and, all, and all everybody, that's everybody, occupants are the people in the canoe. So it's like a few people, maybe two or three, depends on how many, it, you know, it could fit. So the mass one is 152 kilograms. So we're going to say M1, the subscript that, that one there, because we're writing it mathematically, right? Subscript that and turn it off. And that's going to be equal to, what did we say it was? The first mass was 152 kilograms. 152 kilograms. Okay, so we got to still talk about the second canoe, right? It's going to be our mass two. Okay, so what is, what's going to happen there? Well, let's take a look at that. So uh, let's see, how are we doing on time? It's 1040. We're doing pretty good. We're going to do a simulation in a moment. So we go back to the problem. What was the second canoe? The canoe, canoe two and its occupants is a mass two. I, I kind of just spelled it out for you guys. 250 kilograms. Okay. I'm taking all this from the problem and putting it into perspective for you. So we're going to take that here, and I think it was uh, 250, right? Yep. So that's 250 kilograms. Okay. So far, so good. We got to talk about what the question is asking us. That's our unknown section. What is the question asking you? So we look here, it says, what's the acceleration of each canoe? That's two canoes. All right. So let's take a look at this. It's going to be A from our equation earlier. This is A1, right? So A and 1. I'm talking about what I did up here, right? That's the first canoe. All right, so maybe I should put this here so you understand it. Let me turn this off. Yeah, I knew it was low, All right? Turn you off. 
I should put that in the notes, you guys. When you see this problem on a quiz day, you won't panic. So, canoe. Is that right? One. And over here, this other equation is going to be what? So, canoe two. Canoe two. So you understand what I'm talking about, these two boats, which are just basically canoes. And if you do been in a canoe before, it's, it's kind of fun. You just got to watch your balance or you flip over and you'd be upside down in a canoe and trying to, trying to breathe. All right, so this is A1 for acceleration one, everybody. That's going to be equal to some number you're going to calculate using algebra to find out what acceleration is. So meters per second and squared. Remember I told you that. We're probably going to just use M or S squared to keep the calculations pretty light. All right, so let's raise this to a power. And we're going to raise it up. Turn it off. And there we have it. Now we gotta do this again because honestly, we have two accelerations we have to calculate. So I'm just gonna take this one and alter it so it matches what's required. Okay. And this is for our acceleration of the second canoe. Right. I think that's the one that's going to the right. Okay, so we got everything. Does everybody have this much or should I put this part in the notes? You have to have it edit the same way. You further just take a moment and type it, or do you put it over there to the notes so you can work with it? I just need the unknown one. You say you just need the unknown section? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to put everything over there for everybody, and you take what you need. Okay, thank you. No problem. Uh, let's put that over here, and that's, that's pretty much how you get started on this. And for those of you that are like, you know, still struggling with some other parts, I'm going to put this part in there too. Okay. Just in case you missed that portion. This is before that part, by the way. So what I'll continue to try to do is always include the chat uh, transcripts in case you guys miss notes. It's up to you to review the video to make sure the notes are complete and correct or in the right order. All right, so we're at 1044. Let's power through this so we can get to the simulation and try to get you guys out of here a little early for GGI and lunch. All right, so what do we do with this, right? We've got to use the strategy. Is use, uh, solve, not use, but solve for uh, acceleration, right, of both. So uh, just say acceleration, which is A, be A1 or A2. We're going to use the same procedure, right? And using algebra. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let's start with the first, you know, canoe. So canoe one situation. Here, I'll put, hey, this is canoe one. Let's get acceleration by itself. So take this equation and work with it. I don't need to keep saying canoe one because we know that's the start of canoe one. A1, that means it's canoe one. So this will be ended up being F1 when we're talking about this equation. So here's how you would read that. Let's put that in there right now. Okay, so that's F1. And I should have put that earlier, but it's all right. So that, and then it's this way. Okay, good. Now it looks better. So we're going to work on this one. And what you have is now you want to get the mass detached from the acceleration. So that's that's a multiplication process. We're going to put parentheses around that. We want to detach that uh, that mass attached to it. These are the changes. All right, this is what I changed. And then what you want to do, like I said, is we're going to divide because the opposite multiplication is division. 
So we're going to divide by mass. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So we come over here. And we got to divide by mass over here as well. So far, so good. Now we got to clean it up. All right, so I'm going to take this and we're going to clean it up now because things cross out, right? What crosses out? Well, if we take a look at it carefully, mass divided by mass is one. So this goes away. We strike that part out. And then we also have to strike out this portion. So now we get an entirely new equation. I'm going to shrink down and pretty much all of this is going to be gone and all that's left is acceleration. So this is gone. This is gone because they, they cancel each other out. So I'm going to put this over here because in science they want people to write from or read from left to right and not the other way around. That's too small. So I'm just cleaning the equation up for you guys. There we go. Better. And this is gone over here. I just rewrote it for you the correct way. All right. So that's A1 in essence. Now, there's one thing I forgot to mention. You got to use mass too, right? For all of these. So let's clean this up real quick. And then I'm putting in the chat so you guys can have it accurately because that's, I just thought about that. Like, we got to refer to them correctly. So that's mass one. Make sure you know which one, which known values to use so we stay consistent. Uh, this again is mass one. That's mass one there too. Okay. There, so you see it correctly. Everything cancels out. Ah, that's a lot. To, this is the thing of beauty. All right. So, um, does everybody uh, have this much done or no? Because it's about to start putting the number values in. I say yes or no, maybe. Almost. Is it almost? Okay. There we go. That's all clean now. Except for these. <laughs> That's going to bother me. Because these are all mass ones. I don't want y'all getting confused. So I'm not being petty. I'm actually being very accurate. Um, can I expect y'all to do stuff if I don't do it? And this one, too. So that leaves one more. There. Okay, this one didn't do it. Come here. It's got to be correct. There we go. Okay. And then lastly, you. <laughs> all right. Cleaned it all up. There we go. So this is why we get the acceleration of the first canoe, everybody. All right. Notice how it's all written. I'm going to put this in the chat because I know it's a lot to do or see. But you have to have it written the same way. You can't just copy paste it and be like, okay, you take it how you get it. And it's like, okay, well, you will take the grades you got. Please, please work at doing stuff correctly. Okay. So it's got to look the same way as it is on my screen. Those are not M1s. Those are ones subscripted. All right. So this is at a size of uh, what? I'm going to blow it up some more so you guys can see it. I'll probably go to 200%. And then bring separate those two so you can see it better. Yeah, okay, that's a little bit better. And uh, let's come down a little bit. You got this section of notes, and now we're on this part. Okay. So we got one more to calculate, everybody. And it's not hard, but it's going to take some edits. So let me put this in there for you. Why well, I already put it in there. But I'm going to give you about two minutes to catch up because I don't want to be like I'm moving too fast. Still got to do our simulation before we get out of here. So try to get this done. Can't give you too much time because we haven't even done our uh, simulator where we take our screenshot and put it in our document. It's 10.51, so we got a little time. It's uh, 
we end this at 1110. Are you talking, Mr. Tyler? I am now. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you, Lisa. Okay. So now what we want to do is, let me make sure this thing is working right. There we go. We want to move. Can you hear me, Lisa? Can anybody hear me? I think I can. Yeah, okay, I can cool. hear you. Uh, to be sure. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So the next thing we want to do is take our known values and put it into this problem, right? So we know everything about the first one. That's going to be, let's rewrite the equation because I cleaned it up for you, but now we're putting the values in and crossing things out. So I'm going to put this here and we have what exactly? Well, we know our force, the first force was what? Here to negative 48 Newtons. So minus 48 Newtons, right? And that's going to be a mass of what? That's our mass one. So that's 152 kilograms. Okay. All right, cool. So some things are going to happen, happen to cross out here, right? Let's see what happens. Well, remember, Newtons have inside of them uh, basically what is known as your mass, which is kilograms, and they're going to be multiplied by um, the mass times the acceler uh, I'm sorry, meters per second, and then squared here. Okay, that's from the acceleration part that's already inside of Newtons. Raise that to the power of two. All right, so now we have some significant things that are going to cancel out. And then we got to make sure we do the calculation numerically to see what it is. Let's plug that here. What crosses out is the kilograms portion. If you don't see that, that's kilograms divided by kilograms now. So we're going to strike that out. And then we're going to also strike out this one because they divide out and make one. Okay, and we now have a new equation. This drops out. This uh, also drops out this kilograms portion. And it's meters per second squared is going to be the, on the end of the calculation. So I'm just going to cut that out and put it over here. That's what you're going to be dealing with in terms of the measurement. Okay, so now we got to calculate it, right? 
and we can use Google for this quick one or any other calculator you can think of. There's a few resources in the Google Classroom slide I gave you guys. I'll open a tab and say, hey, Google, what is this equal to? If you put equal sign first, if you type it in, and Google tell me that will be a negative uh, 0 0.3, let's say 32. So that'll be equal to a negative 0 0.32. I think it was three two, right? Yeah, three two because at five there, and that'll be if that's pretty much accelerating meters per second squared. So that's the first part of an answer. But we need canoe two. We're not done here, so don't think you're finished. Canoe two. Well, for canoe two, we can take all of these calculations and just edit it for canoe two. So I'm gonna do that real quickly for you guys, so you can have that part. And I'm not going to do the final calculation. I, I kind of want you guys to do it. So how do we set up canoe two? Well, let's put this here as a starter. We're going to say this is canoe two. Well, that means every one of these ones, oh, it's going to hurt my feelings. I have to change the twos. So we'll start with this very first one. I was like, all right, so this is two. This is two. And this will be two. You gotta go through and do this if that's the way you want to do it, or you can retype it. I mean, but that makes this mathematical calculation correct for the part two version. Okay, I'm just going through and editing it for you guys. Because, I mean, this is all you have to do to finish the second part of it. This is about Newton's third law. But what happened to one, there was an effect on the other. I think as it goes uh, for every reaction, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Sounds like a riddle, but it's kind of true. So let's see, this is two. And the number of values here change too, right? Because those are not mass ones and mass uh, acceleration ones or no, force ones. Those are actually um, for the second canoe. So we have to change the values. Two. Now we got 1059. I'm doing good. We're almost through. Let me do simulations and get out of here. So these values are all going to change now, right? I think I got all of it. This is supposed to be F2. There we go. So we got one. All right. Yeah, I think I got it all right. Okay, so now the values are what? Let's go to our, our first section of notes for our known values. Well, we know that F2, or force is a for, the force of the second canoe is 48 newtons going to the right. So we got to change this to positive 48, all of these. So it's positive, 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 positive. But was the mass the same? Well, let's go back to our notes, back up top in our unknowns, right? Well, it's not. It's 250 kilograms for that second canoe. It's like a lot more people in the other canoe. All right, so if that's the case, we got to use M2. That's why we did all those corrections. I think it was 250, right? I think it's 250. I'm going to type a whole bunch of 250s and I'm wrong. That's 250. Okay, so these are the edits for that portion. That means this answer is going to change too, right? So what could it possibly be? We're going to put that in Google and get the answer. Uh, Angel left. You're going to have to check the video out, I guess. Uh, so let's grab that. It's going to be this bit here to here. And I'm going to say, hey, Google, I want you to calculate something else. And it gives me a 0 0.19. So we have uh, right here 0 0.19, and that's meters per second squared, the measurement. All right, so that is, in essence, the entire problem. You have to do the same type of setup to practice or for your practice problem or your homework problem. You have to have the steps, right? But we have to have one simulation picture before we get out of here, and that's how we get out of here a little early. So you should have the simulator up and running. If you missed any steps, just check out the video and try to finish up.
Um, I should put this in the chat to help you guys out. Let me put that in there so you can have that. That second part is for Kenny too. Somebody's about to say something? Yeah, I was. I was going to ask that you get the message that I sent on the homework problems. On the homework problems? What message? Yeah, because I had turned it in early, but I accidentally put my physics inside the engineering class. Oh, no, I don't. I don't is you put a message? You sent a message to SB? Yeah. Okay. I didn't, I didn't get that message yet, but I'll look. Uh, I was in here teaching. I didn't even know. Sorry. <laughs> no, it was from last night. It's not a message. It's like a, a comment on the homework thing where you submit oh. the problems. Okay, I, I'll look into it. I didn't notice it, but um, this the oh the the simulation. Oh, Jacqueline left. Darn it! All right, so let me get to that. I'll I'll look into it though, Lisa. Here's what you guys need for your simulation snapshot because we're we're running out of time, and I kind of wanted to let y'all go a little early, but you need this snapshot in your your, your last slide, right, or last of your document. I have a refrigerator, and we got to turn on some of these values too. So turn them all on. And um, you're going to give it about a certain amount of Newton, Newtonian force, right? Mr. Tyler, so can you um, put the link in the group chat? For the simulation? Yeah. Yeah, okay. There you go. Is it working for you? So once you got that going, you want to have this set up so it looks as if they're actually applying the force, right? So you notice there's some friction, and I can't get it moving, but I can take the friction down, and you see that you have ice, okay? What I want you to do is just have a little bit of friction where you can get, the go get this um, box moving with all this stuff on it. You need at least three objects that you're moving. You can choose the little girl or you can choose the guy, all right? So they put them up there. You see it adds more to the opposing force. This is a, a way of understanding Newton's third law. There's a force that we have to push to make things move, but there's so much that is pushing against us until we overcome that barrier, we can't make things move. All right, so to do a snapshot, you come here, screenshot it, right? Once you screenshot it, downloads. And you come over to your Google Doc. Okay. Now, when you're in your Google Doc, make sure you click at the bottom of your document because you don't mess up your work. And just go to Insert, Image, right? And Upload from Computer. This will allow you to upload it to the Google Doc you're working on. I got to select uh, Downloads. That's the problem. I got stuff all over the place. There we are. And if you select the image you download and hit open, it'll pop up there. Okay, so it's 11.05. Uh, if you can share out, you can leave a little early. Um, but you need it just the, as much as I've done completed. So now you can use this entire time to catch up, ask questions, or use it to get most of the synchronous work done. Also, 8 p.m. is when this assignment is due. So please get all parts completed. So who would like to share out first? Oh, don't forget about the GGI link, everybody. The, um, the screenshot. The screenshot? Uh-huh. You mean the simulation or what I did? Yeah. So this? Yeah. All right. Well, if you're using this time to catch up, go right ahead. If you have something to share, let me know. Okay, go ahead. okay, you got a lot done. 
There you go, Lisa. Okay. Did you get the um the I, I think that I saw the picture earlier, right? But you just yeah, yeah, I saw it. Okay. You just moved too quick for me. Okay. All right. Well, uh, Lisa, you can free to go. Make sure you turn it all in tonight. You usually do though. See you later on today. Um, okay. Aaliyah, you got something you want to share there? Yeah, but I'm trying to get the um this screenshot together. What's the problem? I'm trying to get the numbers on the um the thing right here. But the uh, other side is moving down too. Y yes, that's the <laughs> right. All right, Aaliyah, look up the classroom term. You'll understand why that works. How do you get it on 247 and the other side 500, I mean 454? Well, first, first make sure you have everything set on top of the boxes, right? So do you have your refrigerator? Oh, a person on top of yeah, that. see? Yeah, there's things you didn't do. So it's going to be the same way. Let me show you my screen so you can see it again. This is just a snapshot. This might give you a bigger view. Okay, so... Well, did, he fell off the thing by now. He it went too fast for him, but he, <laughs> this is the wrong one. That's why I took a snapshot. So, okay, go back to this. Yeah, so we got 247 going in frictional force, 454. You got that much? Um, I'm trying to do it, but it won't let me because it keep moving. <laughs> okay, take a picture, just put it in, Aaliyah. You're trying. You're trying your best. Right. Uh, if not, finish it by eight, and I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Um, or I got, do I see you later for another class? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, but you got the GGI link or no? Um, no. It was okay. Let me put it in the chat again because I give out extra credit for you guys participating in that stuff. So try to be there. Uh, there you go. All right. So see you later. All right, bad. Thank you. Yep.